Welcome to a Brief History Conspiracy Additional. In today's episode, I'm doing Bob Lazar. If you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe to the video. So in addition to our Brief History Conspiracy series, which is tracing all conspiracies and mysteries through time in order, at the point of recording this episode, we're just hitting Atlantis, which is obviously very cool. I'm also doing these additional episodes, and I'm doing Bob Lazar today basically because the documentary is out on Netflix at the moment, and he has just done an interview with Joe Rogan. And I really wanted to talk about what if Bob Lazar is actually telling the truth. So, who is Bob Lazar? In 1989, he did his first television interview um, as Dennis. Um, they protected his identity. And he talked about UFOs at Area 51. He really is the person that, even though Area 51 and aliens was talked about in the area and people had started to see lights in the sky, it wasn't a national news story. It wasn't a national phenomenon. And he really put Area 51 and S4 on the map. Literally in some senses, because it actually didn't exist at that time. So, um... He was a guy, he was into his jet cars and jet bikes, and he is a scientist, a very clever guy. And he basically came out and said, I worked at Area 51, at S4 to be exact, and I saw and worked on UFOs, alien spacecraft. So, why is Bob Lazar still being talked about? For one reason, his story has always stayed consistent, and I'm going to go through a few points in a minute that actually people over the years... I've called him a liar about, and then actually it's turned out that he was true, and he was honest. The government seemed to have tried to cover up his work history, his university degrees, his... They seem to have tried to wipe out large portions of his life to discredit him. But then over time, this stuff has come out, and it's turned out to be true, that actually Bob Lazar's the one being honest. He's predicted scientific breakthroughs, like the discovery of an element 115, which currently isn't stable, but at the time of 1989, nine, early 90s, didn't exist at all. It's been created and it now appears on the periodic table. He predicted that gravity was a wave, that it isn't a graviton like scientists used to believe. Now, he has actually very honestly come out and said, that, well, that was a 50-50, wasn't it? I happened to have got that right. But the element 115 wasn't a 50-50, and he got that right. So, what did he actually say? He says that the government has half a dozen or so UFOs. He says that we have been able to fly one or two of these vehicles, and that we have tried to reverse engineer the technology. He says that these UFOs were found in archaeological digs. One of them was possibly damaged, as if it had been hit by some sort of projectile. So maybe that was a more modern vehicle. But if true, and if Bob Lazar is telling the truth, aliens are not only visiting us today, but they've been visiting us for potentially thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. That has massive implications. But the other thing Bob Lazar talks about is the complete lack of knowledge the government has about this project. They have these vehicles. They think they know where they came from, they have no idea how to reverse engineer this technology. He uses the example of dropping a small nuclear reactor in Victorian times and see what happens. And that is a little terrifying. They, he talks about having this gravity generator on the desk and then basically playing with it. He talked about that he saw the test flight program. He took his friends up to a mountain top and they filmed this vehicle being flown. They said they actually got to a point where they started to take the piss a little bit and were going up there in a Winnebago and basically cracking a beer open and having a barbecue and then were surprised when a bunch of military people turned up. He was taken in and debriefed and, by his surprise, let go. But this was the first real time that Bob Lazar was proved to be right. He said a vehicle would be flown. He said the time and the day. He took friends and people up in a, quite a large group and they watched this vehicle and even filmed it. But there are other times Bob Lazar has come out and in the past has been called a liar and since been proved right. In the documentary and in Joe Rogan they talk about the handprint analyzer 
Um, it's an intense light over a box and it measures the bones in your hand and then your ID card pops out the bottom of it and it was a way of securely tracking who comes and goes. For years, debunkers have said this isn't true. This ex device didn't exist, it wouldn't work if it did and Bob Lazar's a liar. Then it became declassified that this device did happen, it was used and it was actually used in Area 52, which is obviously next to Area 51, shockingly, um, during the stealth program. They've spoken to people that worked on this machine and apparently it was useless, it kept breaking down, the engineers hated it, but this is now proven in, in, in the public domain. Bob Lazar's been saying this since 1989 and been called a liar for basically 30 years. Other things he came out with was that he said he worked at Los Alamos. Initially, George Knapp, who was the first person to really release this story, went around and asked everywhere, do, do you know Bob Lazar? And Los Alamos people said, no, we've never heard of him, he's never worked here. Then they happened to get hold of a phone directory, and lo and behold, Bob Lazar's name's there. They phoned Los Alamos back. Bob Lazar, the guy in your phone directory, do you know him? Nope, don't know him. And that is still the, the official line today, that he never worked there, even though we have the phone directory that shows he did. All his degree history and his um, college history has been removed. But then there are people that have, have confirmed that he not only went there, that they used to give him lifts, or they saw him on the campus, or they saw him... They, that if he didn't go, he was spending an awful lot of time there. Another thing that really interested me is that he talks about how the vehicle works. Now, it's based in scientific principle, but if he's lying, it could be based on scientific principle. He's still a scientific-based guy. He could have just made this up still. But then he talks about how the vehicle moves. He talks about it hovering, turning on its axis, and moving towards the belly, moving forwards. He talks about how this is because a bubble of anti-gravity is in front of the vehicle, projected from underneath the vessel, so that it is basically being dragged along by that. Bit more complicated than that but that's the gist but then the tic tac video was released by the u.s government now this is a verified genuine video that we will be talking about in the future but you can see this vehicle turning its axis and moving towards its belly you can see it moving in the way bob lazar described now that is huge he's predicted several of these things that he's been called a liar for for so long but then as time goes on and more research is done and more evidence is found he seems to be being found to be honest so if he's honest about all this stuff could he be honest that there are ufos now i'm going to talk about the psychology in the man as well i come from a psychology background i've worked with people that that lie when i see interviews with bob Lazar, i do see a character He's somebody that builds jet engines in his back garden. He is somebody that has appeared regularly in newspapers. He is somebody that helped a bunch of prostitutes set up their computer system for some reason and setting up a brothel. That's an interesting point, actually, that when he was arrested for helping to set up a brothel, he was being threatened with um, police time. And he still say stated that he went to university at MIT, went to university at Caltech, he had a job at Los Alamos, etc. He stated these facts then. He was investigated and they couldn't be substantiated. And that just meant that he was going to end up facing prison time for what he'd done because they couldn't substantiate his background. The probation service couldn't authenticate his details. So that was just going to mean more prison time. But he did not change his story. Now that is important. Even when threatened with prison, he didn't change his story and hasn't changed his story over 30 years. But in these interviews, I see a scared man. I see somebody that is quite honest that the fact that he released this information because he needed insurance. In one interview, the reporter even gives him the opportunity because, oh no, that's not the only reason though, is it? You wanted to, you know, um, do something good for mankind and you wanted this stuff to be released and you've talked about being a crime that this is being hidden from us. And he sort of says, yeah, but mostly it's from the insurance. He comes across as a scared man that isn't doing this for the brave reasons, isn't doing this for the altruistic reasons. He's doing it because he's trying to save his own skin. 
that's not normal for people to admit. But I also see an angry man. I see him talking about how this is a crime against science. He talks about he's not really interested in aliens, doesn't really care about that. What he cares about is the science and the technology and it being hidden from mankind. And I see a man frustrated. I see a man getting very irritated, talking about how he has to keep defending himself. While talking on George Knapp, he talks about, where are these people telling me that I am a liar? Where are these people telling me this isn't true? Where is the proof to say this isn't true? You can say you can't prove this, you can't prove that all day. Prove me wrong. He was frustrated. He was irritated. And this is also a man that doesn't seem to really like the limelight. He has done these interviews because of this documentary. He obviously loves the science and he loves talking about the science. But what he doesn't seem to want to do is actually talk about aliens. Now this is what people want to hear. And this is also another thing, that his story stayed consistent. He hasn't elaborated on this thing over years. He hasn't made, you know, more outlandish statements to keep himself, to try to keep himself interesting to people. He doesn't go on big tours and things like this. This is a man that is angry that the truth should come out and wants the truth come out, but at the same time doesn't crave the limelight. And this is a man that has tried to prove himself over the years. He has accepted polygraphs. Liars don't do that. He's done hypnotherapy. Now he said he wasn't actually trying to remember stuff, he just wanted to talk, he would just rem remember technical details. And I find that fascinating. He, was, he said there was so much going on and he feels like he's, he missed bits or he can't remember bits. And that's why he went into the hypnotherapy. This is also something liars don't do. They don't subject themselves to things like polygraphs. Polygraphs that, by the way, he passed. So please go watch the Joe Rogan interview. Go onto Netflix and watch the Bob Lazar and Flying Sources documentary. It's fascinating, it's really interesting. Um, like I say, this is somebody that I've followed for probably about 20 years and it's amazing. And I have to ask, what does it mean if it's all true? It means that we have been visited by aliens. Aliens are coming to us regularly. The government don't know who they are or what they do, what they want. They have been coming for, we don't know how long. And the big question to, are we alone? Is answered. No, we're not. We are not alone and they are here. So please, if you're new to my channel, like and subscribe, leave a comment. What do you think about Bob Lazar? Biggest liar ever seen or one of the bravest whistleblowers of all time? Thanks very much, see you again soon.